Now, I know I featured these two pro gamers a lot, especially when they're facing against each other. But at this point, I feel like every second, maybe every third video I upload is featuring one of the two. The thing is, they're, they're playing some of the most fun StarCraft 2 out there. Plus, on top of that, they're incredibly good at the game. Plus, they play in pretty much every single online tournament that's currently going on. So, I think I'm going to keep featuring them, assuming... You guys are not getting sick and tired of it just yet. So, game number one in this best of three series. We find ourselves on the map Babylon. Spawning right here in the bottom right corner. Building three barracks on the other side of the map. We have none other than Gumiho. His opponent in the opposite corner. Who could it be? Of course, we're looking inside of the main base of Dark. <sighs> Has he figured it out? Okay, no, he does not yet know. At this point, he sees a bunker coming up in his natural expansion, and he's gonna pull a whole lot more of the boys. Spinecrawler fires up, double queens are coming up as well, six zerklings on the production tab, but this is not a double rex opener, this is a triple rex start. This is for all intents and purposes a complete all-in. Now Dark is trying to get a wraparound on those marines, but they're popping out of those barracks very, very quickly, and so far the surround is not going to happen. I don't like this at all. No, I don't like this at all right here for Dark. Gumiho may very well get the fastest win that I've uploaded in months. All right, and that takes us to Royal Blood. Now, did Dark decide to adjust his strategy? Nope, just decided to go for a hatchery into a gas geyser, into a spotting pool once again. This time around, it's gonna be a marine first right here for Gumiho, which is meant to try and, well, at the very least, lay down the law right here on that Overlord. I don't think the Overlord is gonna go down, because it will be able to hide right here on top of that high ground, but this is already a little bit of an annoying start. Second marine shows up as well, and we're even gonna be flying the barracks? Alright, Gumi. I mean, when I see a barracks flying like this, right? Uh, yeah, it's gonna try and provide high ground vision, and it will. When I see this thing flying on over here, I... what? I just assume it's gonna be Terran Mech right from the get-go, but no, Gumiho continues the marine production right over here. I don't know what the man's been eating for breakfast, lunch, di well, I don't know, man. I don't know what he, what he put in his tea today, but this is a hyper-cheesy Gumiho, and I love to see it. Okay, there's another overlord on that pillar over here. Queen is running on over in this direction, too, which is gonna be very helpful, it turns out. Because there's marines over here, but there's already a bunker coming up as well. What in the world is this bunker going to achieve? I'm not exactly sure, but at the very least, I think Lynx, yeah, will have to be produced. So, 12 more are coming up right now. Dark sees the bunker, and this is such an annoying spot. Gumiho right now plugs another entrance as well, so... 40 Zerg units to get a wraparound on this bunker, they're gonna... Oh my god, he can repair that beautifully there too. Yeah, they're gonna have to commit. Super annoying. He's gonna salvage the bunker. He's gonna get 75 minerals back. And I wouldn't be surprised if these marines are at the very least going to try and make their way back home. Alright, barracks apparently back into the main base. Starport finishes up straight into a fusion core. Yeah, of course, Gumi, why not? Don't don't let your opponent see it though. Did Dark see it? No, Dark did not actually see the fusion core. Are you kidding me right now? Did you just Okay, um, now I don't believe Dark clicked on it, but what could it really be? It could technically be an armory, right? Something along those lines, but I think it's a pretty clear giveaway at this point of what it is that Dark is playing against. That's actually a big shame. This is a very, very fast battlecruiser as well, because I think this one will be out at like the 5 minute mark, maybe 5 minutes, 10 seconds, something along those lines. He did fire up a 3rd command center right now too, so the 3rd command center is gonna finish up at a reasonable time as well. It's not like this is gonna be a all in opener here from Gumi whatsoever. Not like the one that we saw in game number 1. I love watching Gumio games, man. There's something spicy about these, uh, these two playing against each other. Normally, right, whenever I cast Dark, normally it's Dark who I am uh, raving about when it comes to his strategies and his build orders, but even he seems to be taken aback right now. Hitting a classic Dark supply block, 65 out of 66. Not entirely sure why. He just fires up a whole round of overlords. He's got himself a group of links just hiding in the corner. Yamato Cannon Research, by the way, on the side of Gumi. That's an indicator that he wants to go for multiple battle cruisers. I don't think he's gonna sit around on just a, well, a single one. It doesn't really make any sense. So there's the, that's gonna be a little bit later than 510. Yeah, there's the battle cruiser though coming up. Uh, we've got ourselves a couple spore crawlers. Now, Hellions are coming in from the site. 
I don't think they're really going to commit. Hold up, I'm gonna take just a moment here to lower my window blinds. There's glare on my monitor. There's glare on my monitor, I'm back. Uh, I couldn't see my screen. Okay, Battlecruiser. <laughs> Battlecruiser coming up. I didn't see the movement right there of those Zorklings initially. Battlecruiser decides to teleport across. I wonder... Okay, no. If he was gonna sit there for a little bit and wait to... Well, for that tactical jump to come off cooldown again. The thing is, by the time that you're ever gonna get that done, I think, uh, yeah, there will probably be a Spire in production, and Gumiho probably still assuming here that Mr. Dark did scout what he was playing against. I'm actually not 100% convinced that Dark figured it out. Even though he did technically have vision right there, he didn't seem overly prepared. That lair timing wasn't, you know, super early here either. Normally, if you really know you're playing against battle cruisers, you'd be going into a Spire a little bit quicker than this. Anyways, in the end, Spire is coming up. Six drones have gone down. Yamato Gundo is going to finish up here momentarily. You can see that Dark has got his queens in multiple control groups, which is a thing that Zerks have been, uh, yeah, favoring over like the last two years or so. The first person I really heard doing that a lot was Mr. Raynor. If I'm not mistaken, Raynor still plays with three queen control groups. So he has got one control group for the queens that are injecting the bases, and then one control group for the queens on the left side, and then another control group for the queens on the right side of the map. Obviously, it kind of depends on the map and the, uh, the different angles that you have to protect, but the queen is apparently such a good unit. Definitely the best Zerk unit, by the way, by a very, very significant margin. Um, yeah, definitely uh, a unit that apparently can be used in many different ways. The fact that it doesn't cause larvae, and it's only minerals, and it's a spellcaster, and you can make it with just a spawning pool, and it spreads, well, creep, which is probably the strongest zerk mechanic? I mean, the queen really is a, uh, a bit of a legend. Anyways, he got a kill right there on that fourth hatchery, which is nice. A new hatchery is coming up over here in the bottom right corner. Third command center, in the meantime, has landed, and the second factory is coming up inside of the main base. It is, however, going to be a bio transition, which Dark right now also is well aware of. All right, Hellion's here trying to get yeah, a bit of a run by into the third base, but not going to happen. Corruptor's now coming up as well, and despite all of this early game shenanigans here from Gumi, it looks to me like we are transitioning towards a stable mid game. Okay. So, only two battle cruisers, by the way. Normally, when it's yeah, a battle cruiser opener, you get your mono gun. I feel like you do get at least three. But well, apparently Gumiho at this point has realized, yeah, probably not really worth it. My opponent is going to get Corruptors out regardless. I guess with two battle cruisers, at the very least, you prevent the opponent from going Mutas. I mean, you could technically do Mutas, but against just a single battle cruiser, Muta play is quite popular. So it's going to be a Roach Corruptor here into what seems to be a Ravager Ling Bane with some Roaches and Corruptors for support. Okay, so this is a dark strategy to a T. Very uncomfortable style to play. This would be a huge snipe, by the way. Okay, well, he could have gone after the hatchery. He decided to go. Nice micro there by Gumi. Okay, this I don't like. He didn't know that there were a couple corruptors hanging out here. Okay, well, not ideal. Anyways, he does end up sniping those queens. Guaranteed the damage is basically always the name of the game. Hellion's still trying to get a run by over there. The battle cruiser's now, in the meantime, going towards the bottom right hand corner. Battlecruiser play at this point is so common that I can't even really clickbait it anymore. I used to be able to clickbait it, man. Whenever Battlecruisers were out in the game and, and uh, you know, I would put them on the thumbnail, maybe in the title. People would click the video right away, but you guys, you guys have gotten spoiled when it comes to Battlecruiser play over the last, I want to say, half year or so. They've become so popular and so common in the meta that, yeah, you just see a Battlecruiser on the thumbnail and you think, yeah, whatever, I might watch that, but probably not. Kind of amazing how that works. Lovely play here from Gumi, though. I really like what Gumi's doing. Yeah, I also really like, by the way, that Battle Cruisers are as common right now as they currently are. Transfusions on drones. Okay. Not something we see all too often, but very quick clicking right there by Mr. Dark, that's for sure. Who seems to be taken aback a little bit so far in this series, right? Like he is, uh, yeah, taking a very, pre uh, a very passive approach. Now, of course, Dark is one of the very best late-game players in the world. I wouldn't want to be facing off against his late-game. Gumiho also just laying down the law over here, though, dude. That's the spawning pool going on. New spawning pool is coming up immediately. Sticks around for a little bit. Not afraid, apparently, of the Corruptors, but maybe he should have been. 
Sees the timing of the hive at the very least. Pushing over here as well in the center of the map. The Gumi God, dude. Yeah, eventually those meta effects will go down. So maybe that wasn't quite ideal. But we do get there. And we do now have four base economy. Battle cruisers, I believe, in the top left hand corner. That's one of the battle cruisers chasing the tail of the other. Kind of like dogs. They sniff each other's uh, exhaust pipe. Eh. Eh, that could be... No. Anyways, don't take that out of context. Fifth command center is already coming up. I think we should be seeing a... We should be seeing a, uh, a Ghost Academy. Yeah, you guys know my love affair with Ghost Academies, right? We, we need to see them, Gumi. Don't be that Terran player who doesn't get Ghost Academies. They're too good. Okay, well, he's pushing in right now, Dark that is, into a lot of sieged up tanks. Is there enough for him to overwhelm all of this? I guess so, but this is gonna be really expensive. It's not like Dark's economy is, uh, you know, much, much better here than the Terran that he can just throw all of these units away. All right, well, at the same time, maybe he can counterattack right now. There's really not that many units available. Battlecruisers being a nuisance, just sort of flying around, killing whatever they can. Ultra Cavern coming up. That surprises me a bit. Tactical Jump is available. Getting a Corruptor before he gets him out of there. He'd love to see it. In the meantime, Battlecruiser number two. I'm gonna start harassing here the bottom right hand corner. This is something that Dark does very frequently lately. I've, I've casted quite a few of his games and I've tried explaining why I'm not a big fan of the Ultra Cavern. The thing is, in my experience, I'm just gonna repeat myself again in case you didn't see literally every single video I upload, which I know never happens because you guys watch every single video that I upload, right? But just on a very small off chance that you didn't. Um, so real quick, I think Ultras are great if you're ahead. So if you're ahead and your opponent doesn't have a great eco, say you've contained them on like three bases and they can't really wiggle their way out of it, I think that, yeah, Ultras in that case are amazing. But when you know that Terran's already up to four bases, you know that, well, ghosts are very, very much so part of the plan here for Terran. At this point, we don't have a Ghost Academy yet, unless I'm blind. No. So, maybe it can work. But I really feel like Ultras are not a great state for this particular game. Anyways, he's once again pushing forward here. Very expensive trades right here for the Zerg, though. Yeah, this is what I thought was going to happen with that first attack. But the second attack a whole lot less successful than the first. Now the Ultras, though, are coming up. We really do need Chitinous Plating, though. If we're not going to get the Ultra upgrades, they're just going to be... They're just going to be absolutely destroyed. They, they... Like, you need at least the armor upgrade. Greater Spire coming up as well here for Dark. I guess that's because he still has those Corruptors roaming the map. Battle Cruiser is still around, by the way. 18 and 8 kills, not bad at all. Hatchery here at the Golden Minerals. He's getting targeted down. Here we have some Yamato Cannons and Teleport. <laughs> Actually, such an annoying way to play them, though. He's just using them as like a medevac drop, you know? Runs them back home, repairs them, waits for the, the teleport to come off cooldown, and then he's once again ready to roam. Okay, now this fight could go a little bit better. Still no chitinous plating, by the way, on these ultras. So as soon as the ultras start taking damage, it should go down pretty quickly. But either way, for now, yeah, it looks like the Zerk army here is maybe just barely strong enough to break through this. Ultras right now, okay, yeah, are gonna be the only units really remaining, and the battle cruisers are now also showing up. Ghost Academy finally begins. It almost feels like uh, Terran players have gotten a little tired of playing Ghosts. They're like, Ugh, I hate winning. <laughs> I hate it whenever I can counter the Zerg late game army. Ugh. I've noticed the same thing as well in Terran versus Protoss lately. It's not like the Ghost has gotten any weaker. If anything, I feel like players have gotten better at using them, and it's not like the opponents are countering them very aggressively. Yeah, anyways, Terran is apparently a little reluctant. Maybe they're, maybe they're fearing a Ghost nerf. You know, you know, if they play less Ghost, maybe, maybe the Terran, uh, what do we call them? We have the Zerka Ball? I guess the Terran Conglomerate? Anyways, maybe the Terran Conglomerate Discord server has decided, you know what, lads? If we don't want this unit to get nerfed, we need to make sure we don't play it literally every single game. Only make it, only make the Ghost when you absolutely need to, okay? I think this was some sort of secret meeting with all the top level Terrans. I, I get it, I get it. But I've got a feeling that the Ghost will probably get a bit of a nerf at some point. Yeah, I would not be surprised. At the very least, EMP. Maybe not so much against Zerk, to be honest, but mainly against Protoss. My god, this is a meat grinder. Holy crap! How many Zerklings was that just now? 
Well, Jimmy and his friends not terrified. Battle cruisers still go out of town. Couple drones, couple corruptors, couple units push through the center of the map. Gumiho is smelling blood in the water, but he needs to be careful though. Yes, he's at an advantage right now, but he's also being very aggressive with his movement. Good splits right here on the units though. Negating a lot of the splash damage, but he doesn't have that much. And he doesn't have ghosts. Like, why why, why has he got five base economy and only just now do... No, he's got like 17 command centers, okay? Why do we only just now see ghosts on the production tab? I genuinely don't think that was a smart idea. Maybe he's... Maybe he thought that Dark was gonna stick around on... You know, just Hydra Ling Bane, right? Or like that Ling Bane based army. I mean, this wasn't Hydra, so maybe Corruptor Ling Bane with Queen support, but like that is a bit strange. Couple Queens going down again. Teleport, teleport! Oh, he can't. No teleportation available, so I guess we're trading out some of that supply count. All right, anyways, he ended up losing his troops over here, and now he's behind in the supply count as well, which I really don't like. I already think that was unnecessary, but anyhow, eventually, all of these units are gonna get sacked. Apparently, uh, it's time for a new generation of Terran. Six Infestors coming up. This is Dark's new favorite unit. There have been games lately where he's literally been going 50 Infestors. Well, not all at the same time, but in total. Which is just absurd. Seems to be his new favorite unit. He never got chitinous plating, by the way, for the Ultralisks. So... Am I blind right now? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna pause the game. He got the Ultralisk speed buff. But not the chitinous plating. How, so he clicked on the Ultralisk cavern and he, he prioritized that upgrade out of all the upgrades? I mean, there's only two, but really. Like, I am- I'm just glancing over here in the top left-hand corner, wondering if I'm just not seeing the chitinous plating upgrade. But that's Roach Speed, Adrenal Glands, Metabolic Boots, Centrifugal Hooks, plus three, plus one, plus three, plus two. Yeah, Ultra Speed. The man got Ultras, but without the armor upgrade. And it seems to be on purpose. There's no way. It's the only reason why the unit is good. Like, you don't get them because of their damage output. Anyways, Zorkling run by over here. Brute Lords coming up right now as well. You know what, uh, what, what Terran is good against Brute Lords? <laughs> okay, I won't say it, but... Can we make some more ghosts, Gumi? I'm just, you know, putting it out there. Ah, pew! Pew, 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 pew! There you go. Pew, 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 pew! Fungal Growth's over here. Yeah, now we're in the late game, though. And this is where Dark is arguably at his scariest. This man is an absolute late game macro monster. His micro is actually just... Incredible. I would even say it's probably better than Serral's. I, I don't know. Nah, maybe I wouldn't go that far. We don't really see Serral play nearly as many games, though, so it's kind of hard to say, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he's very good in the late game. I feel like Gumiho could have avoided this situation, though, if he just would have gotten those units out a little bit quicker. Anyways, Brute Lords, like, we're still just making... Oh, my... No. All right, well, Gumiho pretty much refusing to play a proper late game in this match, so he's forced to GG out. And that takes us to the map Gresven. <laughs> Gresven for a final game of Zerk versus Terran. I mean, Gumiho evidently doesn't seem to be too comfortable playing late game right now. At the very least, not in this series. So maybe this is not gonna be a long game, but I feel like every single game I've seen recently on this map of Zerk versus Terran, it just goes on and on and on and on. There's been a lot of split map scenarios. Hope you got yourself some drinks and maybe some snacks and, you know, all the rest of it. Dark already taking the hatchery over here. Now, that is already a little bit funny. Not usually where you'd be taking it. Six links, by the way, here in total for Dark. Double inject. Has he seen the third? No, he hasn't yet seen the third. Double inject is a bit funny. Third queen does start up. Overlord as well. Metabolic boost right now on the back of it. Why did we go double inject, Dark? Not exactly sure. Triple CC opener right here for Gumi, who's now going to be taking his second refinery, so... 111 with a quick third command center as well. This is Gumiho setting himself up for a nice little macro game once again. So there's a few Marines here roaming the map. They're looking for overlords, but this overlord, it's hidden, dude. Terran players literally cannot see it. Those vices of the Marines, they have some, I don't know, like blinders on a horse, you know? They just, <laughs> they can't see 
Any any anything above the the uh, you know the eyebrows, they, they just can't see it. Those those helmet designs are just not ideal. Yeah. Anyways, they can't possibly be noticing a balloon floating in the sky. Cyclone here coming up for Gumi. Uh, that's a little bit funky. Maybe he is a bit concerned. So we're just going into a whole lot of queens and just some delayed creep spreads. I wonder if that's a mistake, but I have a hard time imagining that it was. Dark going for double inject first really does mean that he's going to have more larva available, but less creep spread. But now he's going into a lot of queens, so... Making two of them at once. Already queuing up a new one, but hitting a supply block. Although that being said, new overlord finishing up right now. Alright. Group of Zerklings here on the left side of the map. Already a, a very dark-ish game. None of this really makes a lot of sense. Same for the Cyclone. He's hiding the Cyclone as well. What are we hiding the Cyclone for? What are we gonna do? We're gonna load him into... Okay. I think this is an Overlord hunting squad. It really doesn't make sense for anything else. Yeah, I've got a feeling that this is a squad mostly just for killing OVs. Sorry, buddy. While the Marines lack peripheral vision, apparently the Cyclone does not have that problem. Reaper here as well as Supervisor. <laughs> he's the only guy who's already gone out onto the map, so he's an expert. Sorry, Jimmy, you've been replaced by the Supervisor. Group of... Uh, <laughs> group of Zerklings? A group of Zerklings. Trying to get a run by in, but not gonna happen. Single Evo Chamber here for Dark, who's now gonna be going for the second one. Okay. He could have already fired up the plus one melee upgrade too if he wanted it, but... Yeah, we're just killing Ovis. I actually kind of like that. Double factory on the back of this. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna actually go into a mech base build right now. The main problem though with mech is that, well, Zork is not gonna have to really respect it until a little bit later. So for now, Dark is just happily droning up. And that droning is, uh, yeah, already resulting in a very nice economy. Third command center has landed on the low ground right now. So Gumi is gonna be able to start getting some... Ooh, some money going there. That Cyclone's putting in a lot of work, actually. I was questioning the Cyclone earlier. But this is a proper battle mech army so far. Yeah. Microing the Queens. And the Roaches, I guess that will be... Are we even gonna go for Roaches? No, we actually don't have a Roach Warren. What a game. Anyways, yeah, Dark is trying to just micro out of this with Zorklings and Queens, and like we have already discussed, Queens are pretty damn good. But he ended up taking a whole lot of damage so far. Honestly, it almost seems like it doesn't matter what Dark does, though, in a lot of his games. He barely ever loses at this stage in the match. He doesn't really die to counterattacks and timings and all that, so... As long as he survives until the late game, I think that's maybe his mindset, right? He's like, ah, oh, I'm so good in the late game, I don't really have to worry about playing optimally. I'll just trade, and I'll just try and stay alive, and I'll just try and force the game to go to distance. You can throw whatever you like at me, but if I don't know what I'm doing, how in the world are you gonna know what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm just, I'm going with the flow, man. And it's, it's working really well. Like, just the the, the, the fluidity, right? I, I guess that's a good way to describe it. The fluidity with, Hitch, with, with which he plays is really pretty. Anyways, nice little Hellion run by over here because all of the Zorklings are on the other side of the map. Loads of SCVs are going down over at the third base, but the same can be said right here for Dark. Queens are running on over here. Reinforcing Zorklings are showing up as well. But for the most part, Dark is just holding down the drone button. So he's gonna replace those drones that he's just lost in a heartbeat and... Yeah, in these scenarios, it is always going to be the Zerk who will come out at an advantage. If you're trading workers, just because of the larva mechanic, Zerk is going to know exactly what's up. Alright, so, there's the Infernal Pre-Igniter upgrade. There's the plus one, plus one upgrades, I think, firing up as well for mechanical units here very soon. Benshee's still... okay, coming up. Maybe that's mostly just in case this would be like a big attack here from, uh, from Mr. Dark, but... Dark still does not have a Roach Warn, guys. So... Uh, does he have a Roach Warn? No, he does have a Roach Warn. Okay. Okay, nah, I don't know. He fires up Roach Speed right now. So he's going Missile and Melee. Hyperflight Rotor's coming up as well, actually. For our Terran player. So that's going to be the Benchy Speed Improvement. You guys understand why I keep casting these guys, right? There is something magical about these two playing the game. 
Like, the Europeans, they play StarCraft 2 very efficiently, very methodical, right? They're, they're doing it like they're, uh, they're plotting graphs on their calculators, right? Like, they're, <laughs> they're trying to calculate angles, and they're, they're writing it down in their Excel spreadsheets, and they know the exact optimal way to play. And then you have these two. I feel like they do, like, you know, 45 minutes of yoga before they start up their StarCraft 2 letter session. And at that point, man, their mind is clear. They, they are very subtle. They, they, they can just do whatever they please, right? And they're going with the flow. They're like, ah, oh, you know what I need right now? Three Cyclones and a, and a Benchy with speed. You know what I need right now? Links against Battle Mech. As long as I just surround units, it's not a problem. It's a lot less rigid. It's a lot less, yeah, restrictive, I guess. And that's really a theme between, like, the Koreans and the non-Koreans. And I used to think that the more rigid approach is the superior one. But the longer that StarCraft 2 is around for, the more things are figured out, the more people will know how to play against the most optimal builds as well. So there's a lot of suboptimal play lately, which actually works out in an optimal way because the opponents are so aware of optimal play that they don't get a lot of practice against this sort of stuff. So these guys are constantly trying to outsmart each other, and it's it's really beautiful. Like, as, as like an art form goes, you know, these guys are abstract painters. Cyril's more like a, like a Mondrian, you know, like the guy who like just the, the squares and the primary colors. <laughs> Did you know there's a Mondrian museum in the city that I live in? There you go. You probably didn't know that. <laughs> I don't know why you would. <laughs> Anyways, speed benches here. Go into town. Roaches and Cyclones dancing back and forth. The Queens are running out of some transfusion energy here. Still, oh yeah, there's Roaches coming in right now from the left as well. And this honestly is a really big move right here from Dark. Getting a very interesting rep around by moving his Roach army off creep. There's a lot of Benchies up in the air though. Queens are transfusing wherever they can. But I think these Benchies need to go back home. Because this Zerk army is going to go on the counter attack. <sighs> okay. A lot of damage being done here. Yeah, this hatchery may go down, but I've got a feeling that maybe even more units are gonna go down right here for our Terran player, who decided to go for an orbital command. Why would you go not planetary? It would be nice. Anyways, Burrow at this point is done right here for Dark. Scan is going to reveal these units, though, but despite all of the micro and the fascinating build orders, there can only be one winner, and it turns out that Gumio has had enough. It's Dark who obtains the victory 2-1. Two, two, Ah, I wasn't entirely sure, but I decided to look it up. Apparently Mondrian, the painter, he was born in the city that I live in. That, that's why there's a museum, and I think where he used to live. 